The Sandman released on Netflix on August 6th of 2022, and it's already become one of the best series of the year, which is a much needed relief for DC and Warner Brothers as it's struggling to get its movie side of the business going. Sandman was a title on the mature reader imprint line Vertigo, which allowed DC to publish more adult rated comics and graphic novels. Due to this, the themes and storylines were much more complex and graphic, making it difficult to adapt to live action. Numerous attempts have been made over the years, including a movie with Joseph Gordon-Levitt, which you might know from the Dark Knight Returns movie, among many other films. This clearly never got off the ground, but eventually, Warner Brothers, with the direction of Neil Gaiman who wrote the original series, finally managed to get this project off the ground and introduced the world of the Sandman to mainstream audiences. Characters like Dream, Death, and the Corinthian were finally pulled from comic panels to television via streaming. With Gaiman on board, the television show managed to bring a pretty authentic feel, and most parts, a one-to-one -one adaptation from comic to television. Of course, some things were changed for a variety of reasons, whether it was studio guidelines, or adjustment from screen to comics, or just changes due to modern politics. Despite this though, the series was pretty faithful and had a lot of cool easter eggs that you guys may have missed. So let's dive in and check them out. Visuals. The visuals in the series are one of the more engaging aspects of the show, from well done wardrobes and character effects like the eyes of the Corinthian, to the sweeping landscapes and the dreaming. But there are some really interesting things that they did that you may not have noticed. One of the more engaging visual aspects to me was the framing of certain scenes in the series. The storyboard team paid close attention to panels in the comics for reference, as many shots in the series can be matched up with the panels in, from the original comic book. Additionally, the aspect ratio of the series was purposely changed in order to accommodate some of the visual themes from the series. Some viewers asked if there was a mistake, but Netflix confirmed that the aspect ratio of the show was changed on purpose, giving some characters an elongated look to them in an effort to make the dream aspect of the shots stand out more. As you finish some of the episodes of the series, you may have noticed the ending credits before Netflix rushed you off to the next episode. But for some keen-eyed viewers, they looked very familiar and for good reason. The original artist for the comic book covers of the original series, Dave McKean, actually came out of retirement in order to design the end credits for all 10 episodes of the show. So on your next rewatch, take a look through the credits to see his work. Practical Effects and Wardrobe like most television shows and movies these days, Sandman used many visual effects and CGI to accomplish most of the shots and scenes we saw in the show, but some of the effects on the show were done using practical effects. Before I get into that though, if you guys are enjoying the video, hit that like button. And for more videos like this, and to get notified when the next video is released, subscribe and hit that little notification bell. Hell was one of the more central, otherworldly realms presented in the series, aside from the dreaming of course. A lot of the scenery was done using CGI, but some aspects were done using practical visual effects. The scene where Morpheus is talking to Nada, his former lover, actual fire was used, so the set had to be doused in fire retardant in order to prevent damage to it. The gates of hell were an impressive visual for the show, and it might seem like it's clearly computer generated, but sculptors spent a month building a 25 foot wide, 20 foot tall set piece. Some interesting stuff regarding the wardrobe, including the Corinthians glasses, which were super dark, and Boyd Holbrook had trouble adjusting to it. Other pairs that were less dark were used for scenes in which he had to walk through obstacles. Fashion designer Giles Deacon was hired to create Lucifer's outfits for the series. Deacon also happens to be Lucifer actress Gwendolyn Christie's real life husband. It was a struggle initially to find the perfect Ankh for death. Many styles were tried until the perfect one was found. Kirby Howell Baptiste was so fond of it that she used it for the press interviews. Although it is well known that the Sandman series is part of the DC multiverse, the Netflix series had very little outright mentions of this, but there were some easter eggs that you guys may have missed from DC, including Jed Walker wearing a Static Shock t-shirt and watching a cartoon in the hotel. Added to that, Jed's crime fighting dreams pictured several DC characters in a monitor room, including Captain Cold, Psycho Pirate, Batman, and Flash. Also, for those wondering if Lita Hall had any connection to DC, She's actually the only daughter of Steve Trevor and Diana Prince, aka Wonder Woman. I doubt we'll see this connection in future seasons, but it is interesting to note. Last thing I wanted to mention before I let you guys go was The Endless. In this series, we saw four of The Endless, including Death, Dream, Desire, and Despair. Two others were clearly mentioned, including Destiny and Delirium. One notable exception was Destruction, who was not mentioned but was referenced in the first episode by Lucian. Lucien mentions that the Dream's absence was not the first time one of the Endless abandoned their duties. 
This was destruction who had not been seen or heard of in the comic for over 300 years. I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know if I missed other easter eggs and what you think of the show in the comments below. But beyond all that, take care and have an awesome day. If you enjoyed this video, click here for some more DC stories.